Hi, I'm Don Stegall. This video is about the World Models Voodoo Mustang ET. It's a very nice little airplane and improvements have been made since the original came out. So if you tried the original, you might be real interested in the new one. Um, it's actually evolved from the P-51 Mustang EP. Uh, on mine, I have a Voodoo canopy, so it looks a little different. Plus, I've added some trim covering. Uh, this airplane had no battery hatch, and I have a uh, balancing lead sticking out so I can charge it. And on the bottom, I uh, cut an air hole, and I connect the battery to the ESC there. And as you can see, this one has fixed landing gear. Um, the original airplane had a gearbox in it for a Speed 400, and the World Models has a motor with a 2.3 millimeter shaft. It's an outrunner that you can use in place of any Speed 400 if you've got any old planes that need a pickup. Um, but I put in um, the World Models direct drive motor and um, changed out the mount. Now I put in a Turnigy SK3 2836 1040 kV motor. I have some 1500 kV motors. Uh, I've tried both and um, I like both. Uh, you can run an 8x8 on the 1040 and you pretty much have to run an 8x6 on the uh, 1500 to keep from drawing too much power. But um, another thing is this airplane does not have a D-tube wing. And um, it's been a real nice airplane. I've had it since 2005, and it's been flown by many, many people. The Voodoo has a number of improvements. For one thing, it has a D-tube wing, and it has retracts. The retracts are uh, very nice. Uh, they're a little fidgety to set up, but I'm gonna do a video on um, doing the uh, retract installation just so that nobody has to deal with uh, what I've already dealt with. Um, but I'm gonna show you a little bit more about the airplane. The original Voodoo EP had a PVC cowl. They switched to the fiberglass cowl that was on the P-51s and it has a motor mount that the 28 millimeter motor fits directly into. Now you have to do a little grinding to get the Turn G SK3 2836 motors in, uh, but it's no big deal. It fits the mounting pattern exactly. Uh, one of the great additions to this airplane is the battery hatch. So now, instead of having to take the wing off to change the battery, uh, you can just um, put the battery right in. Uh, you may be able to attach the battery to the ESC. I haven't since I put one together yet, I don't know. So it may not be necessary to cut that hole in the bottom. That would be real nice. Um, the canopy has sides that come down to cover the cockpit area that's made for the stock P-51. Um, the next runs of the P-51s will have the battery hatch and they may have the retracts. The fan just fits into a slot for the tab and the elevator, you have to take an elevator off to uh, get the step in and out. Um, but everything's CA hinged. So if you want to recover this airplane and make it look like a Strega or a color tile or a galloping ghost, um, that's very easy to do. One thing I forgot to mention is on the belly pan, the belly pan's painted so that you can use these decals and complete the color scheme nicely uh, with the checkerboard going down onto the belly pan. On the belly pan,
it mounts onto a screw and it has a screw here, but I'm gonna use rare earth magnets on mine. I'm gonna convert over. If you haven't bought any rare earth magnets, you can get them in square and round shapes from Hobby King. And they're only like $2 a pack for 10. So get you a bunch of packs of uh, rare earth magnets for holding on your hatches and stuff. The wing is held on by two screws and it has a nub at the front that fits into a slot in the fuselage. And like I said, it's no trouble taking the wing on and off. And for the, for the classic one, um, all you have to do is pop the belly pan off and uh, take the wing off to change the battery if you want to change the battery between flights. The Retrax use a single servo and it's offset to one side so one push rod is longer than the other. You want to keep that in mind when you're assembling the airplane because I found it easier to actually remove the Retrax, set up the push rods, and um, get everything set up that way. Plus there was a little issue with the control horn and push rod binding with a rib and I ground that area out with a uh, Dremel tool and a quarter inch uh, drum sander and it was no problem. Um, I'm gonna plug in the retracts. And I'm using a World Models servo actuator. You can get them for like $10. You should have several of these because they're ultra convenient in the shop. And I have a switch on it and a standard 4.8 battery pack. And I turn it on. And right now it's in the up position. And just turn it and the wheels come down. I'm using a Win King Micro Metal Gear Servo. Uh, they're available from Tower Hobbies for about eight bucks. Um, you can use JR Sport SM22s or JR's got a servo that's the same size. I don't know the number off the top of my head. Uh, you can use E-Flight S75 servos. I've used those a lot in the past. This is a uh, really nice looking airplane. It's legal for Mini Warbird Racing and RC Pro is working on that racing class. Uh, it requires a minimum of 250 square inches of wing area, a minimum wingspan of 35 inches, and a maximum three cell battery pack weight of 220 grams, which will keep battery costs down and it'll limit the speeds. These airplanes get to about 80 to 90 miles an hour with a uh, turnage motor. Only about 70, 60 to 70 with the uh, World Models motor. But Mini Warbird Racing will accommodate foamies and other um, airplanes. There are specifications for the motor size. Um, this is going to be a real fun racing class. I plan to run it on the field behind my house. Um, so if you're in the Virginia or Carolinas area and you want to do some uh, small airplane racing, um, check out stigallhobbypark.com and check out the other links in the video to Airborne Model Showcase, um, rcpro.org, stigallhobbies.com, and my Android applications. I have an application called RC Calculators that has some uh, neat little features like you can calculate um, uh, pitch speed based on the prop pitch and the RPMs. Uh, it lets you estimate what you're going to get out of a particular setup. I do a lot of test stand work with motors and I'm going to be doing a uh, video on the motors that are suitable for this airplane. And I'm going to be doing a video on putting this airplane together even though it's a simple airplane as people seem to like the um, build videos. And I expect I'll have it done this week. Um, it'll only take me four to six hours to put the airplane together.
could do it in a shorter amount of time than that, but uh, I like to take my time and make sure all my solder joints are good on my ESC and motor and um, make sure everything's really set up before I go trying to fly. Um, this airplane does have dual aileron servos. On the old one, they were mounted vertically. On this one, they are under covers and sit horizontally. So that'll clean up the bottom a little bit. So with the retracts and the other improvements, uh, this airplane may be a little faster than the ones with the, the uh, fixed landing gear. EP is available for $130 with the World Models motor. It's available for $110 without a motor. And if you're going to be racing in Mini Warbird Racing, I recommend the Turnigy SK3 2836 class of motors because uh, they bolt right in and they provide good performance. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll be making a lot more videos this summer and I hope to um, get a lot of flying done. I'm, I'm going to the Club 40 Nats in Muncie, Indiana on Friday, July the 10th. If you've been flying Club 40 and you're within driving distance of Muncie, uh, you should try to make it to Muncie for the Club 40 Nats. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and like I said, I'm going to have races for these airplanes on my field, and I'll probably try to get some organized at some clubs in the area. There's already a fair amount of interest in this nationally, so I think um, it could be a popular class. Thanks for watching, and until next time, blue skies and happy landings.